How's it going, Teal Boys? It is the end of the season, and this episode we're going to go ahead and go through all of our postseason stuff uh, up until we get to week one. We can see as we're going into this in a lot of recruiting battles, uh, you know, everybody pretty much on our board at this point that has it committed, I think we are in a battle with. But Joel Hall, the 75 overall defensive tackle, might be uh, who we're going to throw all our points behind. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look. Oh, good. They have, it seems like, decided to uh, offer us a contract extension after going 9-4 and four and winning the bowl. Uh, I think that we will go ahead and sign that one. So we come up to the coaching carousel on this season, and we will kind of take a look at some of this after we sim through it. But the first two that are popping up, uh, Stanford and Pitt, kind of interesting. Uh, David Shaw had his contract expired, so I assume they will re-sign him here. Uh, and Pitt has fired Pat Narduzzi. So I'll scroll through this list of coaching changes here, and we'll see... Uh, if there's anything that pops out, just kind of looking at the head coaching. Uh, okay, BYU has fired Satake, so that's a big change. McElwain gone from Central Michigan. Brom is fired from Purdue. Steve Sarkeesian gets picked up by West Virginia. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that hiring. And after scrolling through uh, the rest of the hirings both for head coach and both coordinator positions it doesn't seem like there was really anything crazy bull gets fired at wyoming but nothing too uh out there now we get to take a look at what players were losing oh it's gonna be it's gonna be potentially devastating i always hate it we do have uh, a freshman outside linebacker who was redshirted uh, trying to transfer he's <laughs> he's homesick interesting uh he wants to go to georgia southern Let's see if we can convince shane bruce persuasion chance isn't all that great and it's going to be hard to promise him a whole lot and we don't want to screw up our promises so you're going to play in more than six games and yeah we won't be able to keep him around other than that this is where it gets a little bit sad we're going to lose a lot of talent trey carter is graduating 82 overall right guard that is a massive loss uh, Overson, our punter's gone. Steven Bedoski's gone. 75 overall at right tackle. I think that next season we're going to be honestly be a lot worse uh, than we were this year. CJ Brewer, the man who had so many sacks on the season, set a school record. 84 overall left end is gone. Silas Kelly, I think he had some pretty clutch interceptions. Uh, Teron Jackson, just all these big guys. Sam Denmark is gone. And honestly... Denmark came up clutch a lot, but he also had a lot of drops on the season. Uh, I mean, it's got to be, yeah, double digits. 12 drop passes is a lot for us in this game. So that's pretty disappointing. Then we're losing CJ Marable. Uh, that uh, that one hurts quite a bit too. Couldn't get him to 1,000 yards on the season. Uh, longest of only 26, but 10 rushing touchdowns and no fumbles on the year. Teddy Gallagher it will be going. Another mid-80s overall player. Um, we lose Greg Latushko, who at 70 overall honestly played a lot better uh, than his rating would show. And that wraps up the rest of our graduating class. A lot of guys going. Um, hopefully we can replace it. We're definitely not going to be at the same level of talent. But hopefully our overall talent starts to increase. And we will say goodbye to these players as we move to see if anybody is willing to transfer. Unsurprisingly, nobody from the team gets drafted. Um, I think we'll be a ways out on that. And we do have two transfer requests. And I think that we might be very, very interested in these. Now, it is important to remember that these players will have to sit out for an entire season. Um, but I'm tempted to say, why should we not take both of these? Emmanuel Bush coming over from Marshall. He's a freshman. It looks like he got redshirt this year. Uh, 67 overall. Not terrible. Not the best that we'll see, but he could provide some very good depth for us. And then how about this Rashad Cheney Jr. 
coming from Minnesota, the red shirt freshman, he'll come in basically and be a sophomore for us. 74 overall. We can't pass that up. I think we're going to allow both of these defensive tackles to come play. And if at the end of the day we have to cut one of them, I'll feel a little bit bad, but sometimes that's the name of the game. So we have gotten our two transfers, which will take up two of our scholarships in the recruiting game, which is honestly good because it will help shore up this class. But now we can go in to the recruiting board. We have nine scholarships remaining. That's fantastic. Uh, 10,000 points. I think, honestly, what I'm going to do is just look at our overall. We're 1,800 behind Ole Miss. Um, we didn't offer a scholarship to Sidney McRae. Is there a chance, or do we just go all in on this defensive tackle, 75 overall? He is a Juco, uh, but could be useful. Or do we look for a running back in Marshall Preston? Uh, another Juco guy, but we did just lose CJ Marable, which is going to be a big loss. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to take a second here to think of how we're going to replace these guys. There are four or five other players that I think that we really even look at here. Um, I'm starting from the bottom overall-wise. Kevin Cook, uh, he's only 66 overall. We are 700 points behind ECU, uh, but he's an offensive lineman, and that's always something that I want to be getting good depth on. Um, you never want to be short on the offensive line. So we have a candidate in the 6'3", 307-pound man from Berea, South Carolina. Brandon Parker, a wideout, 67 overall, a little bit short at 5'11", and he's not the quickest receiver either, so I'm not super stoked on picking up Brandon. Then we have Mike Johnson, a 67 overall defensive end. Again, linemen in general are very, very nice to pick up. 6'5", 232 pounds, and we have a 400-point lead. Then we go up to, to Gamara Kelly, 67 overall tackle. Uh, we have a healthy, uh, almost 3,000 point lead over Clemson. So I think that maybe we give him a few points just to kind of be like, hey, yeah, we're still thinking about you. We still care about you. Um, and then we're back to the top three guys on the board. So I honestly got to think, even though he's a Juco, that we can't pass up this immediate talent in Joel Hall. Um, he won't be around for a long time, but it's very, very big. So Right off the bat, we're going to be looking to give him a lot of points. Maybe not, uh, what, what are we thinking, 6,500 to start with? And then we'll see if maybe we bump that up. Oh my gosh, how about that? I just stopped that on the dime. I'm impressed. I hope that you are too. <laughs> uh, so we have three guys that we're looking at here. Kevin Cook, Mike Johnson, and Marshall Preston. Marshall is another Juco guy. We haven't offered him a scholarship. He's being looked at by a bunch of Power 5 teams. Um, but it's not so crazy. Uh, what, are we, what are we looking at here? 95 speed is incredible. 85 acceleration, maybe not so much, but 95 speed. Even if we pick him up, he could be a pretty solid return man if he doesn't see the field otherwise. So we'll offer him a scholarship, and I think we're going to give him a couple thousand points. We're not too far off. It doesn't seem like Oregon, South Carolina, Stanford, uh, and even Boise are really pushing too hard at him. So he's going to get 1,500 for now. Um, and then let's give the rest of our points to... Well, let's take a look. We've got three tackles committed with maybe another on the way. We uh, might get Nate Smith, but he's not good at the guard. I know that we have two centers uh on the defensive side we have a defensive end and two defensive tackles so we've already picked up more offensive linemen we're expected to get joel hall which to me realistically means that we don't need either uh tackle or defensive end so uh i think that we're just going to guarantee that we get the, the better tackle and give the rest of our points to Gamara Kelly. Um, if you have other ideas about how recruiting, you, or how you would do recruiting in the offseason, let me know because I'm always looking for ways to change up how I'm playing this game because I think that there are ways that we can get it done. But for me at this point, you know, we've already signed uh, so many guys to the team. We know that we're going to sign a few more. I would rather spend uh, my points on a couple guys to make sure that we get the, the recruits that we want that we're in battles with. And then just hope that uh, the, the players that maybe we're not quite as high on decide to commit. So uh, we're going to call it there. Hoping that we get Joel Hall, Marshall Preston, 
and Gamara Kelly in our uh, National Signing Day. As a quick look, as we head into National Signing Day, we are sitting at 89th in the country. Uh, what is uh, what's the top? Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Miami, USC, Penn State, top five. Uh, three five stars for Notre Dame, two for the next three teams, and then zero for Penn State, surprisingly. So we'll go ahead and advance here to signing day and see who is it that we pick up. And how about it? We pick up Sidney McRae. We get Joel Hall. So those are massive. And then we get... Uh, wait, we got Sidney McRae? Uh, <laughs> I got a little bit confused. I saw three names up on the board pop up. We weren't really actively recruiting Sidney McRae. We get Sidney McRae. Joel Hall and Gamar Kelly, we lose out on Marshall Preston. He's going to go to the Ducks. Um, and as we go down, did we pick anybody else up? Uh, I'm not sure why this isn't in yellow, but Mark White supposedly has committed to our team. We'll see if that's true. Um, we pick up Jonathan Williams, a wide receiver, and then that's it. So five prospects there. Uh, one gem, three three stars. I'm curious, what does that do to bolster our class? And let's just scroll through real quick to see who it is that we ended up getting. And I gotta say, I don't remember offering Sidney McRae. I think he still, like, didn't even have a scholarship for him. And Ole Miss had the lead, but he chooses us. Uh, so we pick up a 76 overall true freshman defense event. That seems like a massive pickup for us. Uh, we get a, a defensive tackle that can be plugged in immediately. And just as we scroll down the board, a lot of big talents. That, and then a lot of guys who I think after a few years will be able to contribute, maybe in limited roles. Um, and then there's Kelvin McCoy. And at the end of that, we actually dropped in our recruiting class. 97th, we do go top 100. I'm a little bit disappointed. I was hoping for somewhere around the 75 mark. Um, I think that we should set a goal for next season and I'm going to say 60th I want to be the 60th best class or better at the end of the next uh, season in our recruiting I think that we can do a lot better we did sign a lot of two stars I think that maybe these numbers can flip where we get uh, 11 three stars and seven two stars overall though uh, I'm relatively happy with the way that our signing date went so now we move on to the next stage again position changes uh, this one is going to be a little bit interesting. We'll probably just be moving some offensive linemen around to create depth and maybe uh, safeties to linebackers or something like that. I'll, I'll let you know what we change. As it stands, we have a lot of running backs on the board. Ryan Fordinal comes in as the freshman that we just picked up, and he looks to be the best on the board. Um, well, we have a few guys sitting in the uh, wings hoping to get a chance. I'm not sure where we'll move some stuff around, but there's a chance that we cut a few of these guys. At left tackle, we're actually going to move Cameron Stewart to the other side of the line to a right tackle spot just to kind of balance ourselves out. And then we're going to move Gamara Kelly, the freshman recruit, over from a right tackle to a left tackle. And we have a, a lot of guards. Four left guards, 70, and then 369 overall. And our right guard, 369 overall players. Uh, at center, though, we are starting a sophomore, uh, and then we have two freshman recruits behind them. So 65's there. I'm thinking we could probably move the seniors, Jack Franklin, over to that center spot, and that will give us a 70 overall center. It'll allow Jack to get some good playing time in his final year. And then uh, overall, we just look a little bit better at the line. We have way more guys at left end than the right end, including the two recruits. So uh, I think that we're just going to go ahead and move David Wilson over to the right side. And we'll call that good. Maybe a little bit more depth on the left. And Sydney McRae is going to be very good for us, but that'll work. And we have about half a million defensive tackles. So a lot of these guys are going to get cut. Um, Kelvin McCoy is going to get cut. Adam Johnson will get cut. Uh, and likely at least Raekwon Jones. I might actually get rid of a few more of them, but we don't need that many defensive tackles. We're not going to change our linebackers. They're not the greatest group. Uh, Jeffrey Gunter is definitely the best on the squad, but 
We won't be moving any of that around. And we're going to move uh, Mateo here from a strong safety to a free safety. That'll give us decent depth uh, at both safety spots. And then we have a lot of corners or a decent amount of corners. Uh, hopefully they do okay. Maybe a little bit green at the bottom of the depth chart here. But I expect that Derek Bush is going to be able to do some good stuff. Last two positions that exist. Kicker, we have a senior in uh, Massimo Bacardi. So we hope that he does well his senior season. We need to find a replacement. And then uh, Frederick, our freshman punter, is uh, going to be just okay. We definitely are going to be looking for a good kicker or punter in this next season. And that's going to do it. Uh, you can see maybe a little bit of a regression it's top players still in that mid 80s but a lot less of them so far we still have our off season uh training to go through though so that'll be useful and speaking of that we will go ahead and advance to our training results so let's go ahead and see how everybody uh came out uh biscardi is now a 90 overall kicker he went up plus seven that's pretty insane. Uh, we're just kind of looking at our top gains. Uh, Javon Hiley, 89. Isaiah Likely, 89. That's great. Derek Bush goes up five. Uh, big winners there. Braden Matz goes up at our free safety spot. Our quarterback, Grayson McCall, goes up to an 83 overall. He's pretty quick. He's, he's moving uh, up in his speed a little bit. Uh, how is his passing stats this year? You know, is it going to be good enough? Throw power is up to an 81. Accuracy is up to a 76. Interesting. I, I wish that we could see a little bit more improvement. Fred Payton, now six all overall lower than him. Uh, actually a little bit quicker. So I imagine what the game says is his weaknesses are, yeah, his throwing stats. Um, Bryce Carpenter Jr. is actually better at passing. Uh, and he's considered a scrambler, but... We might have a new uh, backup quarterback. He is a little bit slower, or a decent amount slower than Fred, but that extra passing could make up for it. At running back, Reese White will jump up to 79, and uh, Pinson jumps up six as well. So I actually really like Reese White. Uh, not the strongest back, but pretty agile and, and fairly quick. Our wide receiver core is eh, very mediocre. Uh, definitely going to be led by Javon Hiley, but we knew that going into this year. At tight end, same situation. Uh, just put in Isaiah Likely's name. Uh, defensive backs also look pretty solid. Uh, our, our first string is very good. It's just there's a little bit too much drop off uh, when we get to that second string. So hopefully our stamina is pretty solid this year, but I think that we're in a better place than, than I expected to be. Now we get to go to the uh, fun part where we cut some players. So now we get to do the fun part of cutting players. Thankfully, only having to cut six this year. So right off the bat, we're going to go and look at uh, our overalls. Some of these players, especially the 40 overall guys, are um, if you have a player that's 40 overall on your roster and they don't have teams recruiting them, they're a walk on. If we are able to cut them, we will, but because we don't have enough middle linebackers on the roster, we can't, unfortunately. Uh, we already knew that we were going to cut Calvin McCoy, which it's a shame for him, but that's going to happen. Uh, David Singleton, I think that we will get rid of. We don't have crazy linebacker depth, but he is very, very bad compared to the rest of our linebackers, so uh, somebody else can fill his shoes if we start to take some injuries. We will be cutting somebody, at least, from our defensive tackle squad that numbers uh, in the millions, it seems. So Adam Johnson is a freshman recruit, but he's going to be gone, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I always hate to do this. I always feel so bad for these guys, but if you don't have a place on the team, you don't have a place on the team. It's as simple as that. Uh, and Raekwon Jones, I think, is going to be added to that list. Uh... Only a sophomore, but also only 71 overall in behind a lot of better defensive tackles. And we just don't need that many of them. At the strong safety spot, we have four guys. Unfortunately, Travis Williams, another one of our recruits, uh, I think is going to get cut. I, I hate to do this, but it also helps that he's from South Carolina and we're not going to be hurting any pipeline stuff. So 
I know that we just brought him on, but we're going to immediately cut him. And for our final player that we're going to cut, we're going to go back to the lowest overalls available to us, which it looks like we're going to either go wide receiver, right tackle, or left tackle. At wide receiver, it would be Jonathan Williams, who's 6'1", uh, you know, decently fast for a possession receiver, especially on our team. Uh, but overall, not the best receiver there. At left tackle, it would be a 62 overall Harry Robertson, but I think I've figured it out already because at right tackle, we have more depth and, uh, you know, believe it or not, you might look at that and say, oh, he's going to cut Jamal Coley, another recruit that he just picked up, but no. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to, well, I guess it is a recruit that we just picked up, but we're going to get rid of Andrew White because he's a junior. He uh, is coming in as a Juco player, only three overall better than the freshman. So Jamal Coley, by the time he's a junior, uh, he's going to be much, much better than Andrew White. So the kid from uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, he is gone. And that gets our roster to 70 players. So we are not going to do any sort of conference realignment this season. We'll keep everything uh, as it is for at least one more season. Uh, so we can move on towards that preseason where we can find some recruits to add to the board uh, and then set our custom schedule. Alrighty, right off the bat, I like to go through and set my depth chart and redshirt my players and then uh, get into the custom schedules before we go into the recruiting. So that's what we'll do. Redshirt all our guys that we can. Um, going to be a lot of freshmen. I imagine David Williams, the quarterback, will sit uh, Ryan Fordnell. Maybe should have cut one of these running backs, but uh, I, you know, I think they're all pretty decent. And I'm curious to see how it shapes up in terms of uh, which one we add or, or allow to become the starter eventually. A uh, similar situation with the wide receivers, except we're going to sit Bo Lamb, which first off is a great name. But second is because he's the uh, best guy on the squad here overall wise except now that i'm thinking about it we might go carlos sanders he's a possession receiver but he's a lot quicker and so while that means that his catching stats and his route running and whatnot are going to be worse than bows uh it's easier to train those up i think than it is to train up the um speed so carlos sanders at our wide receiver spots going to get red shirted we will set the tight end dj johnson at left tackle, um, realistically, you only need two deep in terms of your depth. I mean, actually, you you could go a lot worse than that. It's very rare that a usered offensive lineman gets injured. So um, two is solid enough. We're going to be sitting uh, the third string guy if, if it's there or uh, if it doesn't seem too crazy. Willie Lampkin is technically the second best guy, but Donald Wilson could step in there uh however we're going to allow willie to play this year we'll, we'll reevaluate that in the future uh stevie holmes and donald dunn we're going to sit again don't need to worry too much and we have a, you know an extra right guard that we could use and then uh, jamal coley will sit for this season so that's our offensive line red shirted uh defensive line will sit the uh right end david wilson and we won't sit anybody on the uh, D end left outside linebackers fine we aren't going to touch our middle linebackers except Re uh, Reese because he's never going to play for us uh, so I'd rather just not even have the chance for the game to put him in <laughs> and get stuck with a 40 overall linebacker and if something disastrous happens where we do need him we can always burn the red shirt um, corners we won't sit anybody safety we won't accept uh, no I would say we would sit Aaron Diggs but uh, I can't afford to lose my returner of the year and All-American. So that's going to do it for our red shirting. Now we can go ahead and make just a couple decisions. We won't change a whole lot of things from the default depth chart, um, except we're going to put Bryce Carpenter in front of Fred Payton in the quarterback situation. Um, again, slower quarterback than Fred is, but a better passer. And I would rather have better passing if we do need a backup to come in. At running back, we're not going to change anything. We are changing here around uh, just a little bit of a change to make sure that our uh, tight ends aren't playing wide receiver too much. I'm fine with a, pretty much all of this. So we, we will just go and check our kickers. 
Um, and again, kicker, punter, it doesn't matter as long as the guy with the best kick power uh, is taking said kicks. Um, I don't think that accuracy matters, in my opinion, in terms of the user. And <laughs> oddly enough, Javon Hiley is our third string uh, kicking guru. But Biscardi will be getting both the uh, place kicks and the punts. And then kick return, very important to make sure that you get the best player, or, or for me, the fastest player out there, which oddly enough is technically based on speed, the uh, freshman that we're registering, in, Carlos Sanders. Uh, but we're actually going to just get Aaron Diggs to fill that spot. And at his backup spot, we're going to put in the running back, Isaiah Conley. Uh, I don't really like having my backup being a, a player that will see a lot of playing time like Javon Hiley, just because I don't want their stamina getting drained if something weird were to happen there. So with our depth chart set, now we can go ahead and set some custom schedules. So I saw a couple things, not a crazy amount of uh, suggestions for uh, what we would pick up, but enough that we have some ideas to work with. So out of conference, it seems like we have uh, some interesting stuff to work with. They have a set at Arkansas, which I'm not against. It's an SEC team on the road, so they'll be updated. Uh, and then we have New Mexico. That's going to change for sure. So will UTEP. Um, and then we have the rest of that conference slate lined up. So we'll just see what's available to us. I know that we saw... Clemson. I saw South Carolina. I'm fine with both of those. I wouldn't mind getting slaughtered, uh, you know, week one or something by one of those teams. So just going through again, it's got to be uh, a certain amount of big 12 teams, like half of the conference, uh, maybe a West Virginia and then the SEC and the ACC. So we'll go ahead on week three and make that a buy because I, I just dislike having a buy week one. It feels like a waste of a buy week. Uh, so we'll see if a good, maybe a Florida team we could play. Or how about this? We'll play a Big 12 school, one of the updated ones, in Kansas State on the road to open up the season. Then we'll play Georgia State. We will take a bye here in week six and instead schedule a game week three against Clemson on the road. So that's going to be one where we likely get slaughtered. And at this point now we have a Big 12 and an ACC school. So we'll look to find an SEC school to fill this up. We have Bama. We have Auburn. Uh, uh, this could be this could be rough. This could be very rough. Well, and actually after scrolling through all the teams, uh, it's just Alabama and Auburn from the SEC that are available in this week. I know that there was people saying BYU and I really wanted to as well. Uh, mostly just because these two teams played. Uh, in real life, it had a very good close matchup. Um, but because BYU doesn't have updated uniforms, I think that we're going to go with Auburn. And again, we will go on the road there. So it's going to be a very tough out of conference, you know, three power five schools. Unfortunately, we won't play a uh, G5 out of conference school, but this will help our strength of schedule and could at the end of the season if we do well enough pull us forward um i like the the back to the basically back-to-back -back buys to end this season a nice bit of time to rest up before we go into the bowl game and uh i don't know i think that this is gonna be good it's a b minus in strength of schedule which is hard to get in the sun belt and it gives us uh three teams early on to check out the new uniforms for and a, a good challenge where if we do well uh, in this opening stretch of four games, we could very well be ranked. And if we take some losses, then at least hopefully there'll be quality losses. So custom schedule is now set. We can go on to the final part of this, which is our recruiting board. Um, at this point, we won't be creating prospects. Maybe something that we could look towards for the future. But for now, we'll just see what the game gives us. And as always, I'm going to go top 100 and just see, is there anybody with interest in us? No, unfortunately not. So we'll, we'll be relegated to the list of everybody that does like us. And <laughs> right off the bat, a four star with us forced on the board. Uh, we're going to just start adding guys and uh, we'll cut back when the board is now full. All right, so our board is full and we're going to start scouting some of these guys. Now, 
Uh, kind of interesting. Maybe something that you guys can learn to abuse. But in almost every single recruiting class, there is a punter with incredible speed. Aaron Hayes, the ninth overall punter in this uh, class, is that guy. 93 speed, 91 acceleration for a 70 overall punter. Uh, trust me, uh, if we pick him up, we might be running a few uh, fake punts here and there. Otherwise, we'll just start looking. Uh, okay, Neil Boone. Most of these guys that I added, by the way, had at least some interest in us. Uh, a lot of them with a lot of interest. So a plus four for Neil Boone. Deal Dane Cook is our first gem. So back-to-back -back 77 overall linebackers. Eugene McNeil does go down, but still usable. Tom West, ah, mediocre little free safety. Seth Harris, one of the few athletes on the boards. Uh, stays at a 70. Not a quarterback. He can kind of run. He can kind of play defense. He can maybe do a little bit of catching. Definitely an athlete. Nick Cannon. <laughs> Interesting name there. The guard is a 70 overall. Goes up a little bit. Definitely interested there. How about Jason Robinson? Not the fastest. Not the best receiver. Could see something. Randy Frazier goes down. Tom West stays about the same. Clayton Miller looks okay. Charles Moore at quarterback is our first bust of the class, so probably going to be removed from the board pretty quick. Bryant McIntyre is a kicker who had interest in us, but goes down. David West is our first quarterback that goes up a decent amount there, or goes up, I guess, I think. Uh, Chris Johnson, the defensive end, sitting at a nice 69. Uh, we have a couple guys, five guys left to look at. Alfred Schmidt goes down. Craig Morse uh, is added, I believe, or maybe, oh, no, the names are all messed up. Uh, added to the board here was what I thought was somebody else. Let me refresh this, but we did find a wide receiver who had a very ridiculous um, sprint speed that we added onto the board. It must have been Maurice Dingle. Uh, great last name. <laughs> Not the best acceleration, but 95 speed is impressive. And, uh, you know, his catching could use some work, but the route running isn't terrible either. So now just a few guys left to scout. Craig Morse uh, is a bust at wide receiver, which is a shame. Jimmy Massey goes down at tackle. And Terrell Carey, the defensive tackle, the final guy that we're able to scout here also goes down so from here we're just kind of hoping that we find some gems on the guys that we weren't able to scout in this off season but uh you know not not necessarily expecting the best but hoping that we can find something impressive we can take our look here uh before we finish out here at our team grades so a b plus on coaching prestige is pretty impressive after just a year Conference pre prestige is a C plus, which, uh, you know, we could do a little bit better, but average ranking in the conference being 56 isn't terrible for a G5. Championship contender for us is a C. We're sitting right now at 61st in the country. We should expect that to see, uh, or we should expect to see that go up. Academic prestige is okay. And then it starts to get a little bit weird. A uh, stadium atmosphere isn't great with a two uh, home loss streak. Not very good. Uh, average attendance sitting at 13,000 out of our 21,000 max capacity. Definitely want to max that out. ASAP. Pro potential is not good as it stands. Neither is our coaching stability. Um, and oh, I didn't even think about it. We do keep our defensive coordinator, Chad Staggs, but it looks like we maybe have a new offensive coordinator. So that'll be interesting. Athletic facilities are bad. Campus lifestyle is a D. And our program tradition and television exposure are both D minuses. Hopefully those go up. Let's take a look here at our coaching situation. It seems like we got a new uh, offensive coordinator. You know, I never had the pop-up that allowed me to reset coaching skill trees. Maybe that's not a thing on the PS3 version of the game, but... Uh, I'm totally fine. So defensive coordinator Chad Stagg stays, but we pick up a new offensive coordinator in Bodie Reader, who's level 10 and has some upgrades for uh, our quarterbacks and our wide receivers and a little bit for our carrying as well. So ball security, we did have a lot of fumbles last year, maybe something that could be very useful and uh, an exciting pickup that I guess the uh, athletic director just didn't bother to tell us about.
that's going to be it, though, for our preseason. So I'll go ahead and hit start the season. But uh, as it sims through all of this, that's going to be the end of our uh, maybe shorter episode here. Um, sorry for maybe a little bit of a delay between the bowl game and this, but I'm going to use the offseason in the game as a little bit of an offseason for myself and uh, take an extra couple of days to get these episodes out and the next season started just so that I don't burn myself out on this game. I want to get this series going for a while and uh, the last thing I need is to you know, stop having fun while making them. So took a couple of extra days, uh, but we'll be back to our normal uploading schedule, I believe. Um, one preseason All-American, eight preseason All-Conference players, and we got a couple of busts and gems. So that's a solid amount of XP coming into the season as we will head into Kent State, or sorry, Kansas State. Um, I don't know where they're I'm saying Kent State for, but regardless, Herb Street, as he should, is going to go for them. Although... The Wildcats, only a B overall. We're a B minus on this season. I'm curious to see what our actual overall is on the year. But, you know, maybe we have an outside chance as we will head into Manhattan uh, in the next episode. But we'll leave everything in this fresh season for the start of uh, the next episode. I want to go ahead and thank everybody now for 300 subscribers. This has been crazy uh, how... Uh, big this series has been relative to the uh, the other series that I've put up on this channel so I want to as always uh, thank you guys for watching these because it's it's awesome uh, speaking of if you guys enjoyed the video please feel free to leave a like uh, comment maybe what you thought about what I did at the end of the season with the recruiting or, or how you think we're gonna go maybe predictions for uh you know what our record will be at the end of the season personally i know that we're making it to a bowl game i have a feeling we'll be around nine wins again though we took uh some steps back in a few uh spots on the field and we took some step forwards and others uh, but also we're starting with three very difficult games uh, out of our first four so i wouldn't be surprised if we took three losses there and then we would have to win out the rest of the season through our conference to uh get to that nine and three so uh, hoping for an upset in these uh, first few games. Um, but yeah, leave a comment on your prediction. And then if you want to, please feel free to subscribe so that you know when more content is posted. And then please feel free to head over to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. Give us a follow there to know when we go live for some other sports games or who knows, maybe a little bit of cyberpunk. I've been enjoying that one, even with all of its flaws, but that's going to do it for us today. I appreciate all the love and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later. Adios.